um, I'm doing a water change on the 90 and I just wanted to do a quick video, hopefully quick, about why I don't do 50% um, water changes. Okay, so this is usually out there for people with um, very extreme pH um, water parameters and stuff like that. So water here in BC is, in the lower mainland, is mostly soft. It um, comes out like 6.0 pH or maybe even less and it fluctuates a little bit. Sometimes it's higher than normal and sometimes it's lower than normal but it's very soft and there's absolutely zero KH and hardness. So the reason why I'm getting this video is because I used to do 50% water changes and I did use some buffers, um, right here I have a alkaline buffer to raise um, alkalinity, KH, and then I have equilibrium to raise general hardness, which is plants love that and fish do because they both need to absorb um, hardness. And I have this so um, I can raise the KH without raising my pH. So if you have very hard water, just think about this as the opposite of everything I say. Um, if I say something about buffering, then you probably want to take note that if you have high pH and hard water, then take the word um, like buffering or as softening. So um, I did do 100% water changes, but then I, for two weeks or two water changes, I went to get my water tested. And I had very low um, KH and GH. It was probably around like 25. And the range you want to be is around like 100 for both. Or and not exactly 100, but somewhere around there is pretty good. Um, good th lucky for me, I have South American fish, so they are naturally in soft waters. But they still do have some minerals because... You know, they come from the store, and the store has it with minerals, and, I mean, fish, we all know they can adapt, but they still need minerals in the wild because it's good for, you know, it's just good for their immune systems and things like that, so, um, doing 150% water changes is hard to raise your mineral content, because, especially if I had soft water, Every time I'm putting in new water, it's diluting the mineral content. So, I mean, you could definitely buff your water a lot, but this is the reason why I'm not doing 50% water changes is so I can save the amount that I use so I don't have to keep buying more. So, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, and, um, it's good to have a plan. Like, luckily, I went with South American fish, and that the water is soft here. I didn't even know that for like five years ago when I used to keep goldfish. I didn't add any buffers, and I'm surprised they actually kind of lived that long. But now I realize why they didn't live long. So, uh, just wanted to share that bit of information for you guys, and hopefully, um, you guys buffering. So this water, I already put prime in there. And I did lose my sheet to tell me how much I was supposed to dose, but um, I know I'm supposed to do like three s tablespoons of this, but I'm not, I don't want to add too much because, excuse me, because I don't want to have such a high fluctuation of water chemistry that might hurt the fish. Speaking of which, last week I didn't even do a water change. I forgot to bring these from my house in uh, Mount Vernon in Washington and didn't want to do a big water change because I didn't have any of these so I just I just did a top off like one gallon or one five gallon bucket which is like how much I lose in one week because it's an open top so yeah that's what I want to sh talk about and you guys can't really see but um See how these new leaves are pretty white? It's because I didn't add any um, of the nutrients because they start getting used to it. And it looked really nice 
I mean, you guys seen it in the videos, they really did, like, um, bloom and everything, but because I missed out on doing it for about a week, and I did the huge 50% water change last time, they, um, really starting to feel it right now, and, like, the, the bottom leaves are really deteriorating, so, that's it, I'll, I'll get back to this real quick. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So this says to add hardness by one, add one tablespoon for every 20 gallons. So I'm around like 25 or 26. So probably want to add about maybe two and a half tablespoons. Now for those who have never used this, this dissolves very slowly. So this is why I have a five gallon bucket in different colors so I can tell which one's in my dosing bucket. So here's about one tablespoon full. And it gets a, like a really milky um, consistency so I uh, use something to stir it with I do have um, which I probably would do that I'm gonna just use a uh, air pump for a little bit so that's uh, one dose of that and then to raise my alkalinity I'm gonna do this a little bit because it is pretty strong I've used it before lots of times because it does raise it. Um, now you can. I heard you can use baking soda too. Um, let's see, one level teaspoon for ten gallons. I took about maybe fifteen gallons, so that's about right. I took it out, but then you have to realize I'm trying to add it too, so should be adding a little more than normal because I'm trying to add beside, I'm trying to add instead of uh, replacing so hopefully I can beat the 10 minute marker here and then now I would add the the neutral regulator to bring down the pH because the alkaline buffer is pretty strong so that's pretty much um, all in the works of the water change for the 90 gallon. So I was getting bored and I um, was waiting for the python to fill up. It fills up really slowly. And I was looking at my sp sponge filter and decided to wrap some moss and stuff on it. And uh, I don't take credit for this. I've seen this done in um, somebody else's tank who. Um, I don't really know too well, but know of him. He's really cool. But um, this is what I did, and I wrapped my moss around my sponge, and it's cool. It kind of hides the sponge more, and hopefully it'll look cool.